Hi, welcome to the Intuit Developer Portal. My name is Kritika Jagdiani, and I will walk you through how to integrate your Java web application with QuickBooks Online. Before you begin your integration, make sure you've created an app on the Intuit Developer Portal. You can then click on this app. Choose your preferred language that you would like to develop in and go to the Get Started documentation. The QuickBooks Online Java SDK makes it easy to integrate your Java web application with QuickBooks Online APIs. In order to see the complete tutorial of the Java SDK, click here. As a prerequisite, you must have JDK 6.0 or above installed on your system. Your web application must either use Maven or Gradle package managers. You must have some basic understanding of the MVC architecture and the Spring framework. Under the Configure the QuickBooks Java SDK section, you will find the Maven dependencies and Gradle dependencies that are required to be added to your project. In order to access any data from a QuickBooks company, a user must authorize your Java application through an authorization flow. At the end of this flow, an access token will be generated, which is required to make any API request to QuickBooks Online. To initiate the authorization flow, the users of your app click on the Connect to QuickBooks button. The authorization flow requires the app's client ID and client secret. You can find these when you click on the Keys and OAuth section in the left menu. In the authorization flow, your app is redirected to Intuit's OAuth server to get the authorization code after validating the user's username and password. This authorization code is then sent to the redirect URI you specified under the Keys and OAuth section. Please note that you have two sets of client ID client secret and redirect URIs. One would be for your sandbox or development environment under Keys and OAuth, and the same thing exists for your production environment under the Keys and OAuth below the production section. For the sake of this demo, we will be connecting to a sandbox company and reading data from there. The next thing is to go to the applications.properties file and copy and paste the client ID and client secret to that file. The next step is to prepare the authorization URL by specifying the required parameters for the request. This could include your accounting scope, redirect URI, state, etc. The code snippet on how to construct this authorization URL can be found here. This adds the functionality to the connect to QuickBooks button in your Java app. Once the user enters the username and password and clicks the Authorize button, the request is then sent to Intuit's OAuth server. When successful, Intuit responds with an authorization code and the QuickBooks company ID, which is also known as the Realm ID, to the redirect URI that you specified before. If you didn't get a chance to specify this earlier, we can go back and set it in the Keys and OAuth section. You can do this by clicking Add URI and saving it. The temporary authorization code returned by Intuit's OAuth service is exchanged to obtain two things. The first one being the access token and the second one is the refresh token. This access token is required to make requests to QuickBooks Online APIs. However, this access token is short-lived and need to be refreshed from time to time. We use the refresh token in order to get a fresh access token when the existing one expires. You can find the code snippet for this functionality in the sample apps callback controller. With that, you have everything that you need to make an API request to a QuickBooks Online company. 
Let us now run the app. The application is now started, so let's open it. Here you will find the connect to QuickBooks button. This will pop up your connection info. Now choose the company that you would like to connect to. And click connect. Now you have successfully connected. Now let's move on to making a QuickBooks API request. The method below illustrates how to call the company info endpoint by doing the following things. Initializing the data service object. Next, you can define the SQL query. In this case, we shall say select star from company info because we want all information from company info endpoint. Then actually executing the query on the service class. And once you get the company info, we shall serialize the resulting company info from the Java object into a JSON. The data query can be modified to execute any QuickBooks Online API supported query as a string in the SQL parameter request. Let's now run the app. Once our application is started, let's go to the application. Connect to our sandbox company again. Let's click the QuickBooks Company Info API call in order to execute the code that we just saw. With that, you have now integrated with QuickBooks and are ready to go build innovative solutions for small business problems.